Good morning, everyone. God bless you, and thank you for being with us today on St. Patrick's Day. St. Patrick would like to discourse a little bit through me on the graces of the Emerald Ray. The graces of the Emerald Ray. What are these graces? of the ray of the shamrock, the four-leaf clover, the emerald isle, and those who work with the emerald ray, the fifth ray. They are the abundant graces of God that come when we are ready to give ourselves to the Lord and allow the abundant life to be ours because of that givingness. Yet this abundant life is a life of grace, of divine pleasure, of holiness, of presence. And these graces of the Emerald Ray come in often mysterious ways, alchemical ways that we can't always fully understand how it is that the Lord will bestow them because our God as a consuming fire, our God as pure spirit, our God as pure love often likes to engage in little funny alchemies to almost trick us or delight us through these graces. And the elementals, especially the leprechauns, the gnomes, the little fairies and nature spirits, love to participate in how these alchemies play out in our life. Yesterday we received a loving donation from a heart friend, and it was a sizable one that will bless us in our activity. And so I called the person after reading the letter, and it was a divine engagement that manifests through our sharing and this person's desire to share the teachings with people. And he said that often he's on the street in the city where he lives and comes upon homeless people or poor people and just would like to give them something. And he told me that often he gives them 5 or $10 to get something to eat, yet he'd like to give more, a little pamphlet, or something about prayer and how we pray. So we will honor this person's request and do the best we can to fulfill it because of this person's generosity and, of course, because of your generosity, too. The emerald ray is a ray of grace because when we receive it throughout our being and our aura, it is a healing boon. It is a boon and a bounty of light that refreshes us, that invigorates us, that really does resurrect us. It was interesting to note that St. Patrick is the one who dictated in the 60s section the prayer on the resurrection fire. Why is this? Because he desires to have us restored to our true divine state of being. And the beautiful music that we just heard from Robert Resitar, some of the words are comfort and restore. And I see this as one of the graceful and very powerful aspects of the Emerald Ray. It allows us to have this comfort in our world of the Holy Spirit and have the restoration within us, the resurrection within us of our true nature, of our divine selfhood. If we really do count our blessings, we could count forever because when we think about it and actually meditate upon it, we have received so many blessings throughout our life that we could just name them from now to eternity. Every day's opportunity to live. 
our breath, our heartbeat, our vision, our ability to hear, to walk, to communicate, to think, to process information, to love one another. These are graces of consciousness and beingness that God affords us as his sons and daughters, as his creatures. And then, of course, we have many, many other graces that come through nature, through our family, our loved ones, our opportunities to give our gifts, our talents, and express our virtues and our sacred labor. We have so many graces, these emerald graces, to afford others through our hearts, through our vision, through our minds. As I was showering today, a vision came to me of a wonderful four-leaf clover outlined in violet with a very powerful emanation of the violet light around it, accentuating the emerald light with that alchemy of the seventh ray. And I believe that the abundant life is a life of alchemical wonder and splendor and glory and joy. Because when we have the abundant life, everything naturally proceeds with a splendor and an awe that allows us to maintain that fresh new view and spirit of God in our midst, within ourselves, in everyone else, and that joy spirit that we feel in this ecstatic state of being multiplies and affords us greater graces every day. We live in a state of grace through our presence, St. Patrick says. We live in a state of eternal grace through our divine presence. And this grace is the emanation of light of our divine presence that affords us really everything that we require consciousness, the ability to cognize God, to think, therefore I am, and really to have the I am do the thinking for us. And this awareness that we are sons and daughters of God, created in God's image and likeness, is freeing to our soul. We no longer just have the sense that we are lowly creatures, that we are less than the divine because we have that spark of the divine within us. It ignites who we are as a spiritual being in our heart and it sustains that grace as that fire in an ongoing way. Without that fire of the threefold flame, the spirit within us would go out the candle would be extinguished and we would be in another dimension. So we keep that candle lit internally through our devotion to God, through our oneness with our source, through our love of one another and of all life. And this creates, co-creates that wonderful joy field of emerald grace. Emerald Grace, meditate on this concept today as you commune with St. Patrick, as you, if you live in an area where spring has sprung and maybe there is some clover outside, you can go see if you can find a four-leaf clover. We have very large clover on our property by our pond. It's the kind of the white spotted large clover and the bees love that clover. And some of you may have had clover honey Boy, it is tasty, delicious. And the clover itself and the fruit and the flower of that clover is amazing. And the clover that we have is usually replete with either a white or a purple flower when it flowers. White or a purple flower. So there you have the violet light commixed with the emerald of the beautiful leaves of the clover, and of course the bees love this, and they prepare this nectar that is so delicious, and when we ingest it, it brings us 
a type of ecstasy and bliss of the sweetness of what the bees co-create with God. When we utilize the emerald ray with the violet and purple, there is an alchemy that transpires where we have heard that we can transmute ancient records and we can actually transmute patterns in the subconscious that go very deep. It is an etheric cleansing, an etheric washing, etheric transmutation of our memory body when we use the emerald in conjunction with the purple, the deep violet which becomes purple. So try this as an alchemy when you have situations that you revolve that you would like to just permanently put aside and get rid of, patterns that keep coming up again and again, habits that you simply haven't really dealt with or completely mastered, or maybe individuals that continue to press your buttons that you would like to just resolve that relationship with once and for all and be at peace with and be at harmony with. So how do you do this? You can either, St. Patrick says, invoke the emerald light and then the purple and then the emerald again, or you can invoke the purple, then the emerald, then the purple, and test these, try it out, see what the effects are, how you feel when you say, I am a being of emerald light. I am God's glory shining bright. I am a being of purple light. I am God's virtue shining bright. I am a being of emerald light. I am God's splendor shining bright. And you can make up any statement you'd like. And then be still and feel what the effects of those affirmations are in your psyche, in your soul, in your aura, in your mind, in your heart. You may begin to feel a lessening of certain patterns that create angst or even fear or anxiety in your world that give you this sense of peace that the Emerald Ray does bring. Even though the Emerald Ray is primarily a ray of healing and abundance and music and mathematics and science, it also is a ray of comfort, as we heard earlier, and it is a ray that resurrects and affords us the springtime of life, the new spring, which is the time of resurrection. So when we are resurrected and springtime is only, what, three to four days away, I think the first partial day of spring, the spring equinox is in three days, and then the first full day of spring is on the 21st. When we experience the spring, it is an opportunity for the refreshing of our souls and for us to be recreated again in God's image, yet at a higher level than we have before. So every time we invoke the emerald ray and the ray of resurrection, which the purple ray is, there is this alchemy where we rise higher in a new elevated state of being where we are a new creature in Christ. We leave aside some of the patterns of our previous thinking, paradigms that we have accepted that no longer serve us, habits that are really outworn and that we simply must overcome, yet the best way to do that is to replace them with positive habit patterns. I've been reading every day the 40 Days for Life emails from Sean Carney, I believe his name is, the president and CEO of 40 Days for Life as all of these prayer vigils are going on outside of abortion centers, Planned Parenthood centers, where they bring information on alternatives for adoption, to have free ultrasounds experienced by the mother instead of those that are charged at these centers where they make money. And 
it's amazing to see how many babies have been saved, how many lives have been resurrected by the prayers, the rosaries, the Hail Marys of these righteous prayer servitors who come and weather the weather in their areas, oftentimes in, in very cold climates in the north, and are there praying sometimes 24-7 during these 40 days. Some people are not there all 24 hours, yet there are some vigils where someone is there all night long. What an amazing alchemy this is from the beginning of Lent on Ash Wednesday all the way through to Palm Sunday, a week before Easter Sunday. And so I do believe it ends a week from tomorrow on Palm Sunday. And, of course, many of these devotees fast during this cycle, and they may not fast fully for 40 days without any eating anything or drinking anything, yet they fast somewhat or they give up one meal a day or whatever. And I think this is a great practice during Lent when we prepare for Easter Sunday, which is an opportunity to receive a great, great infusion of light from the heart of the living Christ Jesus. And by the way, I will be available and we will, I pray, have a Sunday service. And I like to make it 10 a.m. to noon Mountain Time on Sunday, Easter Sunday morning, for all of us to celebrate the resurrection flame and the resurrection light of the living Christ in our midst with a live message from beloved Jesus or possibly beloved Magda or both coming together. The resurrection light, the emerald light work in consonance because when you have the transition between the fifth ray and the sixth ray, there is this little spark that occurs at the passing of the torch from the emerald ray masters and angels and archangels and Elohim to those of the sixth ray. And they are glad to receive this torch. And they accelerate the emerald light to become the purple and gold flecked with ruby of the sixth ray and take the momentum of the emerald light and then allow it to be transferred into this glorious alchemical ray of the purple and gold flecked with ruby. You know, the purple ray has been called the alchemical ray. The purple light and ray has been called the alchemical ray. And it is very cutting, very intense because of the concentration of the violet becoming purple in this alchemical ray, and it is powerful in its ability to root out darkness while simultaneously bringing the highest and the best up and stretching us and allowing us to feel higher, better, full and rich in levity and light and joy. The resurrection current that St. Patrick bears today is meant to help us to reconceive of ourself in a higher divine order and frequency and vibration. If we can reconceive of ourself as true sons and daughters of God and live in the integrity of our presence, this is a powerful alchemical tool we worship God, yet we know that we are becoming God, clothed in his, her light more each day. And so to feel that resurrection light coursing through our veins, through our auric field, and feeling impelled to do more, to be more, to express more divine light and glory, is this grace, this emerald grace. And the emerald grace allows us to feel better, about who we are. You know, uh, sometimes we don't always feel so great about who we are. We may look in the mirror and say, oh my gosh, I look like I'm getting older, or whatever. And 
you know, that's the time to just stop. Look into your own eyes through the mirror and realize that God is looking back at you through your eyes and God is beholding you as perfect and divine, immaculate and violet in perfection. And so you may as well surrender to God's vision and re-behold yourself as divine in the right way, of course, in a humble way, and allow yourself to come up higher and not to worry about, you know, sagging this or wrinkles or lines or whatever, because it's not worth harboring that consciousness that you're getting older. When we go to Sweden, they have a song, Better, Better, Dog for Dog, which is better and better every day. So we are getting better. How? In spirit, in light, in joy, in the fervor and the richness of what the Holy Spirit will afford us as these emerald graces when we are employed by God. Do you realize that you are employed by God? God is your employer, St. Patrick says. He discovered this secret as a ministering spirit long, long ago. And when he realized, he says, that he was employed by God, that made all the difference. God is my employer. So you can say in the morning, God, I know that you are my employer. And employ me today. You know, use me as your instrument. And when you require resources, you go to your employer. You know, a car, money for this, for travel, for whatever. A lot of you are attempting to get to our summer class now. Go to your employer, St. Patrick says, and demand that you have what you require to be employed by God at our summer conference. And Mother Mary told us she would help us with supply, abundance, with money if we call to her. So test her. You know, employ the employer. <laughs> and something will really miraculously happen. I've already seen it yesterday. It brought great joy to my heart that this devotee afforded us an opportunity to do more projects through this abundance that we received which will help all of us to move forward. What other emerald graces do we have available? The perfect taste and touch and hearing and sight and the perfect smelling of the divine aromas affords us entree into our world, of course, yet the higher senses afford us entree into the divine world where the angels abide. And these emerald graces afford us communication with, communion with the higher beings because the emerald ray is also, because it contains the blue ray, array of communication. We think of El Moria and Hermes and Mercury as the great communicators, yet the emerald light is also a ray of communication. We have to have a receiver and a sender, and we have to ensure that there is very little interference between what is communicated and what is received so that it is received as it is intended to be communicated so that there is equitable information transferred and the words, the expressions are taken in the way they are intended rather than not. So let your communication with angels, divine beings, be radiant, expressive, artistic, joyful, rich in the spirit of who you are. The masters know us, the angels know us. And we are beginning to get to know them more through their heart streams and, I think more importantly, in our individual communication and communion with them through meditation, through prayer. Allow them to communicate back to you when you pray 
by being still for a moment after you pray and listening deeply so that what they intend to share with you, you actually can receive and then use in your life. If we're only speaking all the time like I am doing now and we're not listening, we may miss something important. And so we speak, yet then we let the other person, in this case the masters, the angels speak, and this is an important alchemy. This is why we have prayer and meditation. I think that we should create a book called Meditation and Prayer with the best heart streams from Jesus and Kathumi, released through the Heart Center. I intend that before I take my exit of this body that we will have a book called Meditation and Prayer. And it will be sublime, it will be beautiful, it will be exactly what Kathumi and Jesus desire. And I also intend that we will have a book, as I saw it yesterday morning, on the Chohans of the Rays and their messages. In fact, what I saw in my mind's eye in meditation was that we could have the best seven heart streams from each of the seven Chohans plus the Maha Chohan. And we can have our own book instead of Lords of the Rays, it will just be Chohans of the Rays and their heart streams. So if anyone out there would like to help me and you would like to pick the best seven heart streams from the seven Chohans and the Maha Chohan, imagine a wonderful book that would be a new expressive compendium of the powerful messages of the Chohans that they have delivered through this dispensation in these 13 years. I recall when I was in Minneapolis at Alona Iris's home and all seven Chohans came one after another and dictated. It was phenomenal. That has to be in this book. In fact, I would say start with that, and then go through the seven Chohans one at a time, El Moria, Lanto, Paul the Venetian, Serapis Bay, Hilarion, Lady Master Nada, Saint Germain, and then the Maha Chohan, and have a wonderful, wonderful publication. So I'm not asking Claire to do this, <laughs> yet I see it as a done deal already created in heaven, just requiring someone on earth to help facilitate. And many of these heart streams are already transcribed. They're there. It would just take someone who has the time and the desire to make it so. We could have this done in a year or less. It would be amazing. So my beloveds, my friends, my compatriots, my dearest fellow disciples, of God, aspiring masters, initiates of the sacred fire. Let this Emerald Day where we celebrate St. Patrick be one, where we add a pinch of joy to everything, all of our communiques. Let there be a pinch of expressiveness and creativity and such Elan, that we are just raised in that resurrection fire of the emerald ray becoming the purple and gold flecked with ruby. We are resurrected. We prepare for Resurrection Sunday, Easter, and we are graced by these emerald graces of light. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Helen. And we send a ray of love to your sister for her perfect health, well-being, and divine plan fulfilled, we see a Stel Marie whole in the light, rich in love. Amen. Thank you so much. Bye.